Welcome to lesson three, everybody. We today are going to talk about uh, license plates, which is a really good way to practice um, random letters and numbers, such as in a confirmation code, for example. And we're also going to practice spelling names. And then the question type that we're going to cover in today's lesson is matching features. Okay, matching features. That's where you match uh, a feature to a paragraph. So it's kind of paragraph matching, but not on, well, not always paragraphs. It could be paragraphs or researchers, uh, something, something like that. A uh, little bit about me. <clears throat> I think I told you guys most of this stuff in lesson one, but as always, there's two new little little facts. We should do a quiz later or something. Um, but my favorite book is called 100 Years of Solitude. It's really good. And then my favorite artist is Matisse. Always been my favorite. All right. The course outline is here. We are on lesson three, of course, matching features. Now, let's just review numbers a little bit uh, from what we did last lesson. Remember, this number is 450,005. And remember to listen for that word thousand that replaces the comma. So 450. Thousand, five. Twelve thousand four hundred one. Fifteen thousand fifty. One hundred ninety thousand ninety. Seven hundred fifty thousand fifteen. Okay, now I would like to talk about some confusing letters uh, that might trip you up when it comes to spelling. Okay, with a name or a code or something like that. Uh, the first category is V, B, and P. And with this category, the first step is understanding how to create these sounds. Okay? If you can make the difference between the sounds when you speak, you'll have a much better chance of understanding the sounds when you listen to them. Okay? There's a big link here between speaking or pronunciation and listening. Okay? So the V sound... The V sound is formed by putting your top teeth on top of your bottom lip. V. V. Okay? The, the teeth on lip, that is the key. The B sound is just your two lips together. B, B, B. All right? And there's a little bit of a little bit of air pressure building up, but not very much. B. Feel the air releasing. You build up the air in your mouth and then release it. B. But with P, there is much more air pressure built up. P. P. Okay, the, the distinctive kind of airy sound, p, 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 that sound comes from building up the air and releasing it. P. So go back and forth between B and P. B and P. Feel how the air pressure is different. Okay, that is what creates that different sound. Second, we have D and T. And you, you can probably already guess the difference. It's just like with B and P. D and T. D has a little bit of air pressure releasing. T has much more air pressure. T, T that is released. Same mouth position, but different amount of air pressure. And then the last thing is, is a spelling problem with W and W. Okay, the IELTS uh, writers, we like to try to trick you with double letters. Okay, for example, the word apple is spelled A double P L E. The double P, double B, double S, whatever. We like doubles. And we also like to trick people by throwing in a W. W. Let me just tell you, there, there is no, I think there is no, no word in the English language that has two U's together. So if you hear W, that is the letter W, not two U's. Okay, so don't be tricked by that. It's a simple little trick. Don't let yourself be fooled into writing you, you, especially at the beginning of a word. It is never, never, never um, will a word start with 
to use. That would be crazy. Okay, so don't be tricked by that. As I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, UK license plates are a really good way to practice um, listening for individual letters and individual numbers. And actually, UK license plates follow a certain pattern. Okay, we start with the EU country identifier, okay, like in this case, GB, that is optional. Okay, that's for Great Britain. Then BD is, a, is an area code, so you'll have two letters as an area code. Then an age identifier, which I found a little strange that everyone knows your age, since uh, Westerners tend to be a little bit sensitive about that. And then uh, SMR, okay, those are three random letters at the end. Okay, so two letters for the area code, two numbers for the age, and then three random letters. Okay, so we're going to take a little quiz here. I'm going to read you five different license plates, okay, license plate numbers or codes, and I want you to take out a piece of paper and write down the answers uh, as I read them out, okay? So if you need a second to get ready, go ahead and pause the recording. Otherwise, here we go. Number one, AT50PDT. Number two, BB42DDP. Number three, AV49DVT. Number four, PB98FTD. And number five, QW55EBV. All right, let's take a look at our answers. All right, check your answers there. And this quiz should tell you what, if any, letters from the previous slide, which of those letters you have trouble hearing. Okay, whether it's Ds or Ts or Fs or Bs, whatever they are. And next, we're going to try a name spelling quiz. Okay, I'm going to give you 10 names, and I'm going to spell them as well. What you'll notice here is that most of these names are very common, very common, especially in England. So if you have trouble spelling these names, you may want to take a look at the list of most popular names in Great Britain. Okay? So here we go. Number one, Robertson. R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N. Number two, Kennedy. K-E-N-N-E-D-Y. Number three, Chapman. C-H-A-P-M-A-N. Number four, Johnson. J-O-H-N-S. Excuse me. <clears throat> Number four, Johnston. J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N. Number five, Edwards. E-D-W-A-R-D-S. Number six, Fetters. F-E-T-T-E-R-S. Number seven, Bedinger. B-E-D-D-I-N-G-E-R. Number eight, Sapperton, S A P P O R T O N. Number nine, Wobbly, W O B B L E Y. Number ten, Dempsey, D E M P S E Y. All right, and let's look at our answers Robertson, Kennedy, Chapman, Johnston, Edwards, Fetters, Bedinger, Sapperton, Wobbly, Dempsey. And most of these names are very common. So if you, for example, if you could not spell Chapman okay, or Robertson or Edwards, okay, th those are names that you should be able to recognize and should be able to spell accurately even without them being spelled for you. So I recommend as I mentioned, go online, find a list of the most common surnames uh, in England or in America or in Australia, 
and at least make yourself familiar with the first 50, or at least the first 20. All right, let's move on to matching features, okay? This is our uh, question type for this lesson. So matching features is all about paraphrasing. That is the main skill that you need to be able to match features well. To get the answers correct, you need to prepare by writing down paraphrases for each answer choice. That is the big difference between matching features and the question types we studied earlier. It's paraphrasing is more important here. So a paraphrasing strategy that I really like is, first of all, to think of synonyms. That's pretty basic. Most people do that already, okay? But there is a second and third step that can really help you. If the word is general, if it's a general word, like a category, try to think of specific items within that category. And if the original word is a specific item or a very specific word, try to think of a general category that it might belong to. Okay, so from general, think of something specific. And from specific, think of something general. And like we did earlier in, in uh, lesson two, the point of paraphrasing is not necessarily to guess the perfect answer, but more to uh, prime your brain, to sort of prepare your brain to listen for something similar to that word. Okay, it's, it's a really a way of getting your brain ready to listen, not just for the word, but listen for similar words. Okay, so here's an example. Educational materials. Okay, a synonym, classroom materials. General no, the word is already general. Educational materials is a very general word. It's a kind of category. So specifically, textbooks are one type of educational materials. Okay, we could list nine or ten educational materials, but really just listing one is enough for our brain to kind of register it and to start to open your mind to those possibilities. <coughs> Here's another one. Hamburgers and hot dogs. Okay, synonym, I don't think we're going to have a synonym, but there are more general words for that. Fast food, food options, lunch items, okay, depending on the context of the listening. Um, and more specific than that, no, I don't think so. Those are very specific items. All right, now let's get into some matching features practice as we look at our first example. All right, so to practice, let's look at this example here. Um, we have five questions to answer, and they're based on these five, five facilities. So the question is, what is planned for each of the following facilities? Okay, we're going to choose items from the box here. So we're matching the plans to the facilities. Okay. Now, the facilities are not going to change their name. There's no paraphrasing here, so we don't have to look at this at all. What we're looking at here is the plans. So as quickly as we can, the goal is to paraphrase these plans to our best ability. Okay? So let's start with move to a new location. Okay, now when I think of move to a new location, I'm thinking um, change, uh, possibly something like... Um, Uh, let's see, something like open again, um, move to a new location, reopen, something like this. Okay, uh, let's make this a little bigger. Okay, and let's look at B. It will have its opening hours extended. So what does that mean, have its opening hours extended? I'm guessing that means open later or open earlier. One of those two, I would assume. Okay, so again, we're paraphrasing here. In a way, 
we're doing what we we talked about with um, looking from general to specific. So generally, opening hours are extended. Specifically, what does that mean? Well, it means it's going to be open later or earlier or both. Okay, same thing. Move to a new location, move, change. Okay, and then we're thinking of these synonyms as well. Okay, refurbished, we can think of a synonym, I believe. Um, what does refurbish mean? Let's see, refurbish. I guess it means something like fix, uh, decorate, um, repair. Okay, that's the meaning of refurbish. So we'll put that here. Oops. <laughs> okay. It's better. All right. It will be used for a different purpose. Um, what does that mean exactly? It's hard to imagine what what different. Uh, there's so many options for that one, right? Used for a different purpose, but. Um, Something again like change or new or different other, something like other. Okay, so those are all synonyms of the word um, different, right? It will have its opening hours reduced. Hmm. I think almost the same here, right? It's either going to be open. Ah, I see. Yeah. We could do actually close later, open earlier. And this one, open later, close earlier. It's going to be probably one of these two, probably not B and E. I'm guessing either B is a trap or E is a trap. Okay, we can guess that. Okay, how about it will have new management? Um, management. What do we mean by management? We mean an owner, operator, manager, perhaps. Okay, so a new owner, a new operator, a new manager, and it will be expanded. Okay, expanded. We mean more, uh, bigger. Mm, more space. Okay. Now remember, the goal for all of this, the goal is not to, um, not to try to predict what we're going to hear. It's really more to prepare our brains to hear some different things. Okay, we're not just listening for, you know, chances are the, the script will not say new location or um, refurbished. The word refurbished is not going to appear in this text. I can almost guarantee it, okay? That's the way matching features works. We're testing your ability to understand paraphrased text, okay? It's all about paraphrasing. Okay, I'm gonna read you the script and I want you to try to answer the questions here. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. <clears throat> Down here. Okay, here we go. Now, I'll very quickly outline current plans for some of the town's facilities before asking for your comments. As you will know, if you regularly use the car park at the railway station, it's usually full. The railway company applied for permission to replace it with a multi-story car park but that was refused. Instead, the company has bought some adjoining land, and this will be used to increase the number of parking spaces. The Grand, the old cinema in the high street, will close at the end of the year and reopen on a different site. You've probably seen the building under construction. The plan is to have three screens with fewer seats rather than just the one large auditorium in the old cinema. I expect many of you shop in the indoor market. 
It's become more and more shabby looking, and because of fears about safety, it was threatened with demolition. The good news is that it will close for six weeks to be made safe and redecorated, and the improved building will open in July. Lots of people use the library, including school and college students who go there to study. The council has managed to secure funding to keep the library open later into the evening, twice a week. We would like to enlarge the building in the not-too-distant future, but this is by no means definite. There's no limit on access to the nature reserve on the edge of town, and this will continue to be the case. What will change, though, is that the council will no longer be in charge of the area. Instead, it will become the responsibility of a national body that administers most nature reserves in the country. <coughs> okay, now let me ask you... And that is the end of the listening. So let's check the full script and see if we got the correct answers. Okay, so here's our full script. And let's see if we got it. 16. Instead, the company has bought some adjoining land, and this will be used to increase the number of parking spaces. This will be used to increase the number of parking spaces. Hmm. Has bought some adjoining land. Looks like G is our best answer. More, bigger, more space. Okay, those ideas match this increased number of parking spaces and adjoining land. Notice, none of these wor words appear. Okay, space, bigger, more. They don't appear, but they help us to match up the answer anyway. Okay, and that's what I mean. We're not trying to predict the answer. We're not trying to predict what we will hear, but trying to prepare your head a little bit. So number 16, the answer is G. 17. The Grand, the old cinema in the high street, will close at the end of the year and reopen on a different site. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Move to a new location. Different site. Location, we should have thought. Location could be paraphrased as site, right? But change, open again, reopen. Okay, we kind of predicted that. Okay, so number 17 is A. Indoor market. The good news is that it will close for six weeks to be made safe and redecorated. Fix. Decorate. Repair. C. Number 18 is C. Number 19, the library. The council has managed to secure funding to keep the library open later into the evening, twice a week. Close later, right? The opening hours are extended here. So, number 19, B. And 20. Instead, it will become the responsibility of a national body that administers most nature reserves in the country. It will become the responsibility of a national body that administers most nature reserves. Hmm. Interesting. Looks like F, right? The owners, the operators, the managers of the, the place will change. Okay. Notice what comes right before it. What will change, right, is that the council will no longer be in charge of the area. In charge, operating, managing. Okay, so those kind of words should trigger F, okay? So number 20 is F. And that is our example, okay? So you can see, and I said it many, many times because I've had some students get frustrated and they think, well, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm not guessing, I'm not guessing correctly. And that's not the point, okay? The, the writers of the IELTS exam, we do not, allow that to be the case. Okay? If you could guess, if you could guess the paraphrasing, it would be too easy and we would not be able to use it. Right? It has to be difficult in this way. So the point of the paraphrasing, don't be discouraged if you fail to predict what will appear in the script because that's not really the point. Okay? 
The whole purpose is to get your brain ready to be flexible in the right ways. Okay? All right, guys. Well, that's the end of this lesson, and I will see you in lesson four. See y'all.